Hi everybody, my name is Jessica and this is my channel Plant Hooker. Another day of mentioning a dishonorable mention. So today I'm working on what is left of my string of hearts. Yeah, much bushier, much longer strings. He was much happier not that long ago and I don't know what happened. Well, I have an idea. Uh, back at work, I think he got underwatered a couple of times. And, yes. And uh, I've also had Thris coming through again. And because I'm working, I can't always spray them because sometimes I have to go to bed before the sun sets. So. And I'm gonna be replanting him into this thing. Now this is a, just, you can use this as either a wall planter or a hanging planter. Like so this guy, I used to have my, uh, my goldfish plant in this. I had it hanging on the wall above my hooking table. And I, when it came time to watering, I would just bring these up hang him so then he could drain in the tub that way it's not messy anywhere so I'm thinking I might do the same thing for him and hopefully get him back to normal because I don't think terracotta is good for the string of hearts and it seems like only my peperomia seem to love terracotta, like my Optus folio loves terracotta, the raindrop, the regular Optus folia. Uh, who else likes terracotta? I think that's it. I have a, a Calathea mosaic in terracotta right now, and it seems to do fine with that. So far, so good. I might eat my words eventually, who knows? Hi, Ziva. But while I am, repotting him. I'll talk a little bit about them. Now String of Hearts, their other name, which I believe is Greek, is a Serapegia woodii. Now Serapegias are, is a group of fan, like they're part, they're like these, all Serapegias make like the candlestick flowers, the same as these guys do. And they're part of another. Nee, nee, no, no, don't be us. Actually, that might be better. And they're actually part of another genus of family called the Apo. Aposemias. Yeah, Aposemias, which is like a, a lot of stem succulents. But of the Serapegias. How much loud are you? Out of the Serapegias, there's about 70 different species. So the woody eye or the string of hearts is just one of them. I don't want to go. I might have to dig in here with a tool. Just a little spade. I don't want to disturb him too, too much. in the terracotta I found I had to water him every four days. I think it was four days ago, but this is... This is actually still quite moist, so I don't know. Maybe he was fine? I don't know. And it was just the Thris who was doing the most damage. Ah. Oh, 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 oh. We lost one. There's, there's one, a little bit of root corn for you. And here we go. So, oh, that noise that you're hearing in the background, that's my cats fighting. Diaz and Ziva are sparring. Yeah, it's all over our side. Yeah, so 70 different species of Serapegia. And they were first discovered back 
They were either discovered or named back in 1735 by, I think he was a botanist. white thing there that's a tuber you know we're used to seeing tubers as being more tube like not ball shaped so they're like tubers like onions uh botanist carl linnaeus or linnaeus yeah. so they've been around for a while I'm just trying to get the dirt out of this Now, they are native to like Africa, South, Southern Asia, and Australia. And the Africans will actually eat the roots and the leaves raw. But in India, those tubers sometimes get put in curries. Yeah. Who knew? Well, string of hearts, the best thing about them is they are uh non-toxic to cats and to people i'm not sure about other animals but for me i need them to be non-toxic to cats especially with miss gwen i don't know if you see her miss gwen you know come say hi oh the one time you don't want to be bugged miss gwen here likes to eat plants that are not made for cats. Now, so when he was in the terracotta, he, like I was saying earlier, I used to have to water him every four days. But since he's going in ceramic, I think I'll only have to water him maybe every five to ten. I'm hoping. Because the best soils for these guys, because I went and I bought specifically for him, we'll see if it works or not, is the seed starting mix. This is just miracle Grow. There's nothing fancy about it at all. And it was what's available at my local Home Depot. I didn't, and I wasn't about to travel get like a better brand or order online because <laughs> my kids have taken over their my or online ordering anyways because well that's how I pay my oldest to babysit okay you're allowed to use so much today here's your receipt and it gives him the opportunity to like learn money management and whatnot so I find he does really good in the terracotta I had to fertilize them once a week so I'm hoping being switched to this I'll only have to water them maybe every two or three weeks and the best fertilizer for these guys is of course the succulent plant food or the plant food that's strictly for green plants the fertilizer that's to miss these guys they are perfectly fine with normal humidity which is one of the reasons why he's in this room because he wasn't affected at all by the wood stove however the wood stove is not in a bright enough location this is the brightest room downstairs where the humidity can either be a little bit on the drier side or normal well upstairs the brightest location with a higher humidity is my bedroom and my son's room, my oldest, but he doesn't want plants in his room. I'm allowed to quarantine plants in his room, but that's it. Not allowed to have plants in there. 
Uh, don't clean these guys. They don't like to be cleaned. There really is no need to clean them. And so far, the hair doesn't seem to stick to them like some of my other plants. So I haven't had to, this is earthworm castings. Hear them spreading in here. And as I said, it's just the pure life soil kind. Like this is available at my local Home Depot, so it's great. And I was it in. Keepy Kitty's here saying hi. Uh, they don't, as I mentioned, they don't like shade or they like a brightly lit room. They are fine with full sun, but if you do find that they're drying out more or the leaves are yellowing a little bit, that might be too much sun. So then you just have to, you can leave them in the same room, just pull them back from the window a little bit. this and this here afterwards first gotta check because I have other dishonorable mentions that I will be doing eventually oh, sorry Celine I didn't mean to put dirt on you This is a bright room. He's going to be going right there. So he'll get light from that window, this window, a little bit of that window, and early morning light from that one. Like these are south windows, these are west windows. And actually, well, act, no. The most humid room in my house is the bathroom, and that's an east facing window. And it was, and the humidity would be just too high in there for him. Ideal temperatures for these guys are between 14 and 30 degrees Celsius, but they have been known to survive as low as six degrees. So if the power goes out, that's how cold you have to get to, to make sure your zone for these guys is a zone 9. So like 9A or 9B, whichever. Oh, look at this. He's got two rhizomes. Let's make sure I put you a tiny bit deeper than the other fella. Okay. And here on Cape Breton, I'm a 5A, 5B, depending on what part of Cape Breton you're in. Like Northern Cape Breton is 5B, Southern parts of Cape Breton is 5A. So they can't survive here year round at all. No, no, no. But they can go outside for a short period it's between July and August. Because of that nine hardiness zone, they're also quite sensitive to drafts. So if you have a drafty window, put them in it. Yeah. Let's see if this will work now. Got 
So yeah, the seed starting mix is the best soil for them. You can also use uh, like all purpose potting soil, but you're gonna put like extra perlite in it, or zeolite or vermiculite, whichever you wish. Cause they need apparently extra drainage because they're only medium demand for watering. And you can repot them every year. They may not need like uh, an upsizing, but enough to like change the soils is good. Uh, when it comes to pest, 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 I can guarantee you thrifts thrive on these guys. I hate it. And I'm not a person to hate things, but I absolutely hate it. And they can also be plagued with mealy bugs as well. And knock on wood, I have yet to deal with mealy bugs ever downstairs. I think I may have had mealy bugs at a plant upstairs, but I'm not 100% sure. They may have been like a type of thrist or something or scale or whatnot, but they were big and white. So I'm assuming they were mealy bugs. Uh, but yeah, no, I just keep treating or try to remember to treat and hopefully all will go well. Now, when it comes to problem issues or common problems with these guys is, uh, of course, what I went through, which is probably due to overwatering. Other things that happen with overwatering is a rotting base. Uh, underwatering and then all of a sudden watering them can cause a rotting base because the roots have dried out and they're not used to it. Uh, yellow leaves. Uh, spindly growth is of course lack of light because I think some of this is spindly growth because he was on top of that cabin. I don't think he was, even though it, it's like a bright spot next to the window, I don't think it was bright enough for him. Uh, what else? They don't really get black spots like Peperomia do. But, uh, another sign of overwatering is uh, falling leaves, like the leaves will fall off. And at the time of year, like in the summer and fall, the flowers will fall off. Like the flowers naturally fall off eventually once they've done their time or whatnot. But it's usually in the fall that the flower can blah, blah, blah. It's usually in the fall that the flowers will fall off. <laughs> and uh but if they're falling off before then, or like you see them half grow and then fall then yeah, then that's Another sign of overwatering or underwatering. I think it can be underwatering too because the plant needs to concentrate its energy towards the leaves. I think that's it. Well, no, not quite. Because I've had this guy, it'll, it's been over a year. And I bought him from. bought him a year ago from the local flower shop La Tellier Brio and I'll post a picture here of what he looked like before the shafai started happening so that way you'll know what a healthy stringer hearts looks like compared to a not so healthy Hearts. But at least like these two strings do look healthy. I just need them to get bigger and on the go. Mm -hmm. So if you like the video, you give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, you can always give me a thumbs down. Everybody has a right to their opinion. But if you really like the video, subscribe. 
And as always, live long, plant on. <laughs>